the spring of 2016, I purchased a 24-foot boat called Bay Baby. She was built in 1975 by a quality company I knew well, Stamis. I knew she was a solid, well-built vessel that needed a complete restoration to restore her youth and glory she once so proudly displayed. This was to be my last boat restoration, as I am getting on in age myself, and much resembling Bay Baby in appearance. So it was a foregone conclusion that her new name would have to be Last One. I saw past worn skin and crazed gel coat, past her corroded fittings, her broken veins of wiring, and even past her broken and worn out mechanical heart. I knew bones were still solid, and her lines possessed a rare beauty of past design. She would be given a new heart, new veins, complete skin makeover, and all and anything else needed to reclaim the proud and elegance of the lady she once was. This is my story of the rebirth from Bay Baby into Last One. Since the gentleman I purchased the boat from couldn't believe I did not want the motor and outdrive, he kindly removed them both, saving me the time and trouble. The immediate problem was transporting the boat 135 miles on a broken down trailer. After installing a complete new brake system, complete new electrical system, and adding a new tire, I decided to take the risk. Finally, here at my shop, the boat would stay on the old trailer during her rebuild until ready for launch and then made it to her brand new custom trailer a year from now. First, strip the boat of everything to a bare fiberglass shell and keep a pictorial record of all removed. This will be useful in the rebuild and as a record of what went where. Damaged fiberglass and crazing would be repaired and then the empty fiberglass shell sanded, painted, presenting a new durable polyurethane skin. The paint was removed from all the teak wood, then oiled to restore its original beauty. New aluminum fuel tanks would replace the old. The old instrument panels would also be replaced with brand new ones. A custom swim platform was also built and added. The windows, forward hatch, and motor box all had to be reworked. All the aluminum rails also had to be reworked before any installation could begin. The flybridge required additional structural support. Trim tabs were repaired and rebuilt. New wiring, lights, steering, compass, windscreen, anchor, and all other accessories would be installed. The motor presented an unforeseen challenge. The new Merck Outdrive did not fit into the old larger Merck Outdrive's cutout. The solution was cut the transom to fit the larger Volvo Outdrive. A Volvo to Mercury adapter plate would then solve this issue. I also added a stainless reinforcing plate to the transom to help distribute the extra load from the additional 100 horsepower of the new motor. With a new Bravo 2 Outdrive, the new 350 horsepower MPI Mag Stroker motor could now be installed. Then, with the arrival of the new custom trailer and sporting her new name, Last One, was finally launched and tested. Having aced her sea trials, Last One was finally mated 
with her brand new trailer. Now ready to begin her adventures anew. So finally, last one is rigged and ready for her adventures to begin. She would be used not only for personal ventures, but also as a test platform for the myriad of video products produced by my company, Subsea Video Systems. Enjoy the following previews from some of the adventures that last one could once again proudly embark upon. And of course, all video was shot and recorded exclusively with various Subsea Video Systems products. Our typical home waters encompass the Atlantic Ocean off North Carolina and Virginia as well as the inland waters of the Albemarle Sound and the Chesapeake Bay. Our home port is Elizabeth City, North Carolina, where most of our cruises originate and end. Therefore, a transit through the Albemarle Sound of 48 nautical miles is necessary just to reach the Atlantic Ocean via the Oregon Inlet. So cruises of 70 to 175 nautical miles a day can be common for last one. Rough waters abound here, and the Oregon Inlet's crossing of the bar can be treacherous and has seen the loss of many a fine vessel. Transit of the Albemarle Sound rears its own dangers. Waves of four feet plus is common, and a minefield of crab floats are everywhere. Sighting these floats in larger waves can be difficult, especially when the floats are small and poorly marked as many of them are. Entangling one of these lines in the propeller can cause serious damage and helps keep the local boat mechanics in business. The flybridge of last one is most useful here, providing an elevated view of this minefield of floats and cables. Did you spot the three crab floats? The Pasquotank River begins as a narrow outlet at the edge of the Great Dismal Swamp. Deep enough for passage of larger vessels, caution must be exercised due to shifting logs and branches, just waiting to devour a careless propeller. Birds, turtles, raccoons, otters, and many other native wildlife can be spotted along these banks. I'm even told alligators live here, although I have never had the pleasure. Watch out, log! Slowly the river widens and becomes more friendly. Locals fish for bass, water ski, and enjoy family boating and swimming in these wider protected waters. The water, although clean, is dark and brown in color. The tannic acid from all those cypress trees lining the banks stains this water 
resembling an endless bounty of iced tea. Unsweetened, of course. Farther on, an abandoned railroad bridge, its span removed, still crosses the river. The Elizabeth City Automobile Bridge must open for last one. Then once through, reveals the downtown waterfront of Elizabeth City. Free dockage is available for the numerous transient yachts that ply the intracoastal waterway. From here, the Pasquatank River takes a 90 degree jog to continue its journey and spill into the Albemarle Sound. From here, last one begins her journey to the Atlantic Ocean via the Albemarle Sound. The Pasquatank River rapidly widens, the water becomes brackish, and the crab floats begin. Fourteen nautical miles later, the river flows into the Albemarle Sound. Will the waters be calm? They seldom are. The sound is large. You cannot see the other side. Even light winds produce waves here. There are few boats to be seen in the sound. Only crab boats regularly ply the sound for their trade. Pleasure boats are seldom seen, as the sound offers more dangers than pleasures. The sound can also be mysterious. Waves become swells, as in the ocean, but with less period between them. The sound has you crashing into and through them. Here, waves do not always travel the same direction as the wind. Waves can even travel multiple directions in different areas of the sound. 10 mile per hour winds can generate waves greater than 2 feet. Waves less than 2 feet are seldom seen. Wave height of 4 to 6 feet are common, and the sound is shallow. Average depth is only 12 feet and some areas 5 feet or even less. With its finger-like shoreline, tides and currents, shallow depths, and a minefield of crab floats, transit of the Albemarle Sound is not to be taken lightly. makes for Roanoke Island, a distance of 37 nautical miles. But before we reach the island, we must cross a shallow area of only 5 feet of water.
Between the Outer Banks and Roanoke Island, last one must find the narrow channel, as these waters are very shallow. On Roanoke Island, the quaint little town of Manio is a frequent stop for last one. Free dockage, numerous restaurants and tourist activities make this a cherished stop. The protected marina also offers a safe haven if an overnight stay is required due to bad weather or thunderstorms blocking our return home. Here, the replica ship that brought the first English settlers to America. flying and calibrating our drone in Mantio's harbor. No, that is not me. I'm the smarter one behind the camera. This inland lighthouse is now a museum, open to the public, like me. All too soon, we need to leave Manio and continue our journey to the Atlantic Ocean. Now, crossing the bar is the next challenge. Even on a beautiful day, crossing the bar can be hazardous. Finding it safe today, we move on through into the Atlantic. Once over the bar, the ocean is usually quite calm. Even large swells are easily rowed over. From the sea buoy, we pick a course for one of our common destinations. Out of the rain, in the 
desert, you can't remember your name, because there ain't no one for to give you no pain. La, 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 la. Having reached our destination, in this case, Navy Tower C, 17 and a half nautical miles from Sea Buoy, Oscar, India. Our offshore drone tests can now begin. Yes, that is us. On completion of our drone tests, we will turn for home and begin the long voyage back to Elizabeth City.
What other exciting adventures has last one embarked upon? Some samples. Amberjack following boat. Searching for shipwrecks. Eagle has landed. More flight tests. 